once we started thinking about social entrepreneurs as agents of societal transformation, it sort of begged the question of how over time social transformation had really emerged. And that led us, thanks to Roger's insistence, to think much harder about this, about this subject. And we realized that most large-scale change, large-scale societal change, has come from one of two sources. And the first source is government policy innovation. And you know, as, as Canadians, the importance of the Canadian Health Act, which gave you universal health care and transformed um, Canadian society for everybody. So what were the principles of government policy innovation? Well, applies to citizens, right? Citizens are the primary beneficiary. Ubiquitous, applies across the board to everybody. Um, mandatory, once the law is in place, it applies universally and without question. And then finally, the purpose is societal benefit. So in, in benefiting citizens, it applies to everyone across the board, but its, its purpose is social benefit. Okay, the other source is business innovation, entrepreneurship, as Roger has just described it. So what are the principles of business-led transformation. And that is, rather than a um, citizen, that, that orientation is to a customer. The customer is the primary beneficiary. Instead of ubiquitous application, the scope is limited in nature. Instead of the structure being mandatory, the structure is voluntary. And finally, rather than social benefit as the primary purpose, the driver is profit as the primary purpose. It's not to say that business can't have a secondary social benefit, or that, um, or there might not be some business applications of new policies. It's just to establish these two poles, if you will, on these two domains of societal transformation. And this is what we saw over and over again as the pattern for social entrepreneurs who were really effective at driving change, not making incremental improvements, but at driving transformational change. They go through these four stages. The first stage is understanding the world the actors, the forces, the incentives, the disincentives for the existing status quo, the existing equilibrium. The second stage is to envision a new future, not just an incrementally improved future, but a new future. And for that vision of that new equilibrium to be very, very clear. The third stage, which is really the most pragmatic of all, is to build a model for change. And this model actually transcends the organizational or the business model, but it's underpinned by an understanding of the economics that led to and that sustained the existing equilibrium. If you don't understand those economics, you really can't shift the equilibrium. So that model for change is a really critical piece of this, of this journey and this progression for social entrepreneurs. And then the final stage is scaling the solution. So it's not enough just to have the vision. It's not enough just to build the model. You have to scale that solution. Not scaling the organization, not scaling the budget, but scaling the solution.